are you going to do for us this afternoon, Chef? I was going to do two dishes uh, today. I'm going to make a, um, a seafood burger. It's actually, um, both of these recipes actually are both from, um, from my new book, um, Nathan Allen's Fish Kitchen. Um, these are, they're, quite, they're quite simple dishes. One's, um, the whole book's about techniques. So it runs through from raw um, to sauce to pickled, all the way through to barbecue, which is the burger, um, to deep fried, which is going to be the pollock we're going to do. So the burger is a seafood burger. It's um, going to be um, some pollock, which we got here. Oh, some, sorry, some cod fillet. Um, some prawns and some uh, crab meat. I'm going to make a wasabi mayonnaise. Um, we've got some pickled onions and some char-grilled lettuce. That's going to be the, the burger. Um, and then the crispy pollock is a nice light tempura batter, but you marinate the pollock first. Pollock's one of those fish that really needs some help. It's not, you know, a lot of people go on about eating pollock for sustainability reasons. The reason probably why we didn't eat as much of it before is because it is actually quite bland. So what I do is I marinate it with some um, lime juice, coriander, and a little bit of paprika, and then we make a, a, a take on a tempura batter and a really nice car carrot salad as well to go with that. Um, Kim's here. Yeah. Kim is a Kim's, barbecue man. Yeah, Kim. Kim's going to do the barbecue. So he's on a green egg over there, and Kim's actually the hero of all this. He actually gets all the all the all the uh, stuff prepped for us out the back. So he's on stage this time. So <laughs> don't <laughs> round of applause burgers. for Kim, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the um, with the burger mix. Now, one of the things I really don't like about burgers in general, and I know some people in the audience might have had it before, is the rawness of the onions. Um, so what I do with these you know, shallots, and you can use onions if you want, is we're just um, going to cook them off. And you need to cook them off, just sweat them off, and that'll just take away that rawness, which wouldn't be very nice. Well, I don't think it's very nice with a meat burger, but I, don't, but I also think it's um, definitely not nice with a fish burger. Um, and all you need to do is very quickly dice up the shallot. Mind your fingers. Okay. We only need one shallot for this. And then we've got a little bit of garlic as well. Again, I do exactly the same thing with the garlic. I just do nice little slices down. A little sort of across and then straight through. Okay. Now, what I like about cooking, yeah, the, well, what I like about cooking in general, the favourite part of me is actually where you can make up your own stuff. I've always been one of these people who has to tamper with things, and used to get told off a lot when I was younger about tampering with stuff. But uh, <laughs> with my recipes, you can take them out how you want to. So it doesn't have to be shallots. You don't have to put shallots in there if you don't want to. Um, you don't use to use green chilies. You don't have to use garlic. So, but this is the way I like to do it. Um, but the basic recipe will always work. So you could put you know, red chilies in there, you could put some extra herbs in there if you wanted. Um, but I'm just going to, this is the way I like to do it. And what we're going to do is just turn this on. That's it. Lovely stoves, aren't they? They are absolutely fantastic. The only thing we do have to watch out because we're outdoors, because we've got LPG here, sometimes when the wind blows in, we have to keep an eye because it does blow out occasionally. Oh, okay. so. But we'll, we'll keep an eye on that, Nathan. Right, so you don't need too much oil in the pan. And while I'm waiting, we're just going to put that in there. I'm just going to soften it off. Okay? It doesn't have to be a roaring hot pan. It just needs to be a warm pan that gets that sort of uh, softened off. I'm going to get a bit more oil in there as well. <coughs> now, when you're making a, a fish burger, the actual proteins of the white fish sort of, if you leave them for a half an hour in the fridge, actually sort of um, firm together. Okay, so you don't need to put, you might think you need to put egg, a bit of egg or a bit of breadcrumbs, you don't need to do that. All you need to do is just give it a bit of time. Okay, so it's just going to cut this fish up into sort of some smaller pieces, just so that when you blend it, um, it's easier to actually blend it. And what you also, the reason why you would cut it up small as well, is uh, yeah, the more you blend it, the, the hotter the actual mix will get um, in the blender. And you don't want, with fish, it's sort of 40, sort of 30 to 40 degrees, it starts to cook. So the cooler, the better. If you're doing a large batch of this, if you wanted to make, I don't know, 40 burgers or something, because you're having a party, you want to almost, you want to heat, you want to chill the, 
the fish down to the point that it's almost frozen. So it's still, you know, when it starts to sort of get firm from being in the freezer and then blend it down. That's just a little tip. So just sweat them down. I'm going to take this over to the blender. All right, and also what I've got here as well. Let's get that. So literally, that's all you need to do with the schlock. That's, en that's enough heat. So we'd leave that. Imagine that's going into the fridge. There's some in there that's already been done. All right, but actually, you just cool that down. The reason why you'd cool it down, you don't want to be putting hot shallots and stuff into, that, into the cold fish, okay? So what we've got here as well is um, some prawns. These are a nice uh, sort of tiger prawn. If you, what you want to do is um, make sure you read the labels when you're buying prawns. Um, these have been de-veined as well, so we've taken the, the little sort of vein as it runs down the back off. And we're going to cut them up as well. The reason why I put these separately because the, the actual fish flesh is going to be the softest, sort of like the finer part of the burger, and then I want chunks of prawn through it, okay? I don't want the prawn to... So I want to be able to see the prawn in the burger. And then we got some... <laughs> yeah, Mr. Hicks, it's not your recipe. You'll be, it'll be on your menu soon, though. <laughs> I thought I, I recognised that voice. Yeah, good, you all right? All right, so... Into the blender go the prawns. Just pulse them for just for um, about five seconds. Just so you can still see the actual prawn in there. And when that cooks, the prawn's obviously a lot pinker and you're sort of, it's sort of, you know, it's a bit chefy, but it looks it looks pretty. Pretty. To a six foot five person with 21 <laughs> stone be saying about pretty, I don't think so. Right, so we've got some white crab meat in there as well. And that just literally needs to go through there like that. You notice I've not put any seasoning in there yet. I don't use pepper with this because I've got the heat from the chilli that's going to go in there. So we're just going to put a little bit of salt. Now what the salt does, and I was talking about before about not having to put any egg or anything in there or breadcrumbs to firm it up. The salt actually starts to cure the fish. And by curing the fish, it firms up. Therefore, it doesn't fall apart when you cook it. Okay. Now, we're going to transfer this into a bowl. This stage, it doesn't look the most beautiful thing in the world. But trust me, when it's gone on the, over there on the barbecue, it's going to be lovely. So get rid of that. All right, what I've got here is some of the... Uh, actual shallots and the uh, chilli mixture that's actually just uh, cooled down. So you can see, you can put anything in there you want to. I just chose to put, put the shallots, garlic and the chilli in there, but you can put you know, whatever you want. Now, this stage, what we do is you just give it a bit of a mix. And you probably see that on the camera there, that it's all coming together. Can you see how it's holding there? That's it. Now, what we do is now a nice clean hand. I'm just going to take some of the mix, pat it together, okay, to form your fish burger, okay? All right. Now, what we'll do now is a bit of uh, blue pea pizza magic. You've got some there that were made earlier, which seem to be a bit redder. That's probably where the prawns, okay? Now I'm going to take, can you take these ones? We'll start cooking those. And they're going to take about four minutes to cook. Uh, they won't take too long because the fish cooks so quickly. Right, and while he's cooking them, I'm going to make some, uh, some mayonnaise. Now, <laughs> the idea of this mayonnaise, if you ever made mayonnaise be before, um, it's egg yolks, um, vinegar, 
but you can use lemon juice as well if you want to. Anything acidic, so any type of vinegar, any type of citrus juice. Give it a bit of a whisk. You can put mustard in there as well if you want, but because I'm using this wasabi, I'm just going to go in there with a spoon. This is, my, this is in place of my mustard, okay? So I like a good kick with my uh, wasabi mayonnaise. Now, what you've got to remember is when you're making mayonnaise, everything you put in into the mayonnaise dilutes in flavour. So where you might think, well, that's a lot of wasabi I've just put in there, the actual oil will take away... Um, it's almost like it, by magic, it takes the flavour away. But what it is, is the fat, the fat content in there actually sort of uh, coats your, um, your taste buds um, and then leaves you with, um, yeah, it actually then dilutes the flavours. So, slowly pour in your um, oil. I'm using a light rapeseed oil here. Um, it's not really a place for olive oil, this, uh, this dish. It's more uh, sort of japanese in style, I suppose, because obviously the seafood and the wasabi. Um, and they wouldn't usually use uh, olive oil in Japan or in Asian food. So I'm um, using just a rapeseed oil, so it's a, like a neutral flavour. I'm not looking for the oil to give it any flavour. I just want the wasabi to give it a good kick. So it's quite fun making your own mayonnaise. Um, yeah, you can buy a shop-bought mayonnaise, good quality one, and just put some wasabi in it if you want to save some time. But you know, something like this is quite good fun. Um, just make sure you use it on the day that you actually make it, though. You know, obviously using raw eggs and stuff, so just to be safe. Then you can see it's starting to thicken up. So doing things with one hand like this is because when I first started cooking in my first restaurant called The Black Pig, I was 25 when I opened it, and I had nobody else in the kitchen, so I was I got used to use <laughs> doing a lot of things with no help. So there's no excuse at home. You can all have a go at doing this. Right, so what we're looking for is sort of a sort of mayonnaise consistency. Now that's going to need a touch of salt. Again, I'm not going to put any pepper in there. It's got that sort of wasabi kick from it, the chilli that's in the burger as well. We don't, it doesn't necessarily need pepper. If you like pepper, you can put pepper in it yourself. Okay, so that's the mayonnaise ready. Yeah, yeah. so what I've, what I've done, I've, I've done everything for the burger now that I can do. Um, so what I'm getting on with here is making a pickle. And this is my basic pickle. And I pickle pretty much everything I do in my restaurant with this basic recipe. So you take any alcohol. It can be red wine, white wine, cider, anything you want. You one part of that. So just say one cup. One cup of wine. Uh, one cup of the vinegar of your choice. So cider vinegar, red wine, white wine vinegar. Water and sugar, equal quantities. Bring that to the boil. And that's my basic pickling liquor that I use for everything I do. What we're doing here is carrots. Um, so what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to bring that all to the boil and I'll put a pinch of sugar in there as well. That was all white wine, okay? So I'm going to just cut these carrots, just be careful. And what I'm looking for is to make a nice sort of... Fine slice of the carrot. Now, the same thing again applies. If you want to do a basic uh, sort of quick pickle like this, you can use anything. Root vegetables for me work the best because they've got that sort of uh, texture that sort of lends itself. If you're going to put anything green, um, the chlorophyll, the heat from the actual pickle will actually, you'll lose the colour. Um, but it will still work in the same way. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take some of these carrots sensible little piles, because you don't want to cut yourself, um, and then cut straight through. And I'm being a bit chefy and making, this is what we call a, a julienne, but you don't need to do this. Thin strips is probably a better way to explain it. Um, you can just leave them like that if you want to. Yeah, they, they, they look nice like that as well. I think in the, in the book I've actually used baby, like sort of young carrots, um, and just sliced them. But these are quite, these are sort of like sort of donkey sized carrots, so we're just going to cut them up a bit. Um, but say so this is a good thing to have in your store cupboard, just to have. You know, you've got, um, if you've got an allotment or you're growing a few things and you don't want to do with them, pickle it. Chutneys, pickles, that stuff is a great, great thing to do. Um, and it's very, very straightforward to do as well. So we're just going to take the carrots, put them into a small bowl. Get rid of them ones as well. 
um, and then what we do is bring this up to the boil when it comes to the boil and you just pour it over. Okay. Now while we're waiting for that to boil, we're going to get the, um, the marinade basically for the fish uh, to go in the pollock. So we've got some smoked paprika. This is the, um, I think this is the sweeter variety of that. A little bit of chopped coriander and some lime zest. Now, the, what's, I don't know if you've seen these microplane graters, the very fine ones. Um, they're perfect for this because they actually, they're not, the actual texture of it is edible as well, okay? And then we've got a little bit of green chili in there that we're going to put in there as well, just half of that. Okay, and then we're going to get some of the fish. There's that. Okay, so we've got a side of pollock here. It's just, uh, we're going to cut that into nice little chunks. Now, it's important when you're deep frying fish is to make sure um, all the pieces of fish are roughly the same size. Um, basically, you want them to cook the same size. You know, cooking things in batter is essentially like, I know it's not the health, most healthiest way, but it's a really, really good way of cooking fish because it actually steams in its little jacket of batter. And that's the nice way. You know, steam, steam fish is a really, really good thing to do. And you know, that's what happens when it's in that little, uh, in the crispy batter. So we're just going to cut the middle. What I've done there is just cut the middle line out because it's got almost like a blood line. It's not very attractive when it comes off. But I wouldn't chuck all that fish away. That would just go straight into a stock. Now, back to the pickle. So that's come to the boil. Okay, and then it's simple as this. You just pour it straight over the carrots. Now, in an ideal world, I'd let that cool down. But you lot will get well bored with listening to me. Uh, so we're going to, in a minute, we'll just let that cool a little bit, but you'll get the gist. But all you need to do is, you've got a kilner jar at home, just put that in there, let it cool down. Once it's cold, put the lid on, put it in your larder or somewhere cool, and it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Sit there for months. No, no problem at all. Okay, so we're going to cut this uh, pollock up into nice chunks. They're Are probably two, maybe two centimetre by two centimetre chunks of pollock. Could you tell us how you, uh, how you met Valentine in the first place? <laughs> well, Valentine, it was probably about f maybe six years ago, and actually Mr. Hicks was there as well, he's out the back. We all went on a, a truffle trip um, in Italy, and it sounds very... How very cool is that, ladies and gents, a truffle <laughs> trip? <laughs> so white, hu white truffle hunting for a weekend. All I can say is, out of the whole long weekend, it's probably spent truffle hunting for about oh, half an hour. The rest of it was spent <laughs> in vineyards, tr <laughs> trying, tasting wine, so... Now, what I've done there is just marinated the, the, the pollock. Now, you could leave that up to about an hour. Don't leave it any longer than that. It'll get too strong. Um, but what that's going to do is just make that fish, the pollock fish, more exciting. You know, it's something that's quite bland, and then flavours will just give it a bit of oomph. Now, while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to make... What was I doing? I think we've got some quite cold winds blowing in here, so I've just turned that up a little bit just okay, to get cool. it. It's about 165 at the moment. Yeah. And what I need, to, um, what we're going to do on the barbecue as well, I'm going to change this chopping board. We've got a spare chopping board there. Um, James, just grab another one for you, Chef. Yeah, that's right. I don't want to use that again. Everyone will be watching me. Oh, he had fish on that board, and then he's cut the lettuce on it. I'm going to be in trouble when I. Um, so, what we're going to do is make the batter here. So, what I've got. Is corn flour, okay? Again, nice simple recipe to remember. Equal quantities of corn flour and plain flour. And then what we do is we get some um, soda water, which should be in here. Yep, perfect. Thanks, James. Lovely. And what we do is you get get it ice cold, and what it does it keeps it alive. So if you wanted to make this at home and do like a, for a dinner party, you can get it ready, but keep the actual batter um, over, over some uh, ice and it will keep it cold. Seems to me, I don't know why, um, I think you've got Ashley Palm Watts on here somewhere, haven't you? From That's right, Fat yeah. Duck? Yeah. He, he'll be able to explain to you why the bubble's gone, I don't know. Uh, yeah, he's the, the executive of the Fat Ducks, so he'll know exactly what's happening there, but yeah, just keep it do it at the last minute, but if you want to do it in advance, just uh, just keep it over a bowl of ice. 
Now, what you're looking for as well is the batter to be not too thick, but not too thin. And if there's a few lumps of, um, of corn flour or flour in there, actually, I don't, don't mind it. I think it looks all right. They'll cook anyway. Right. So that's the batter. Ready? Let's get rid of that. Now, as I was saying before, a nice clean ball. We've got some baby gems here. And what I'm going to ask um, our master on the barbecue over there is just to, just to char grill these, these gems. I'm just taking the root off, but not too much so that they all hold, to, hold together. Okay. I'll pass them over. Where's that little plate gone? Aha. Yeah. So look, we're pretty much almost on time now, so um, that's at 180, yep. holding steady, so we're pretty much ready to uh, go, I think, yep. Chef. So what I'm going to do is just finish off these, these burgers. I'll make a couple, I think. Um, and then we need to just fry off this as well. How are we doing over there with the lettuce? Cool. Okay, so take your pollock. Be careful what you say. You don't want to slip up with them words here. He likes to, you're not listening to me now. Now, the pollock now into the fryer. Just be careful when you're dropping stuff into a fryer, obviously. Very, very hot. I love this idea of uh, barbecuing vegetables. That's brilliant. How long have you been into that? Yeah, no, it's a really nice thing to do. I mean, especially lettuce. Lettuce is always... I quite like cooked lettuce. Um, it's not sort of thing you think about doing but it's, uh, it works really well uh, especially them sort of little gem lettuces they got love such a lovely um, sort of uh, sort of nutty note to them it works really well with that char so uh, you know we're big fans of sort of um, char grilled vegetables in general but the lettuces are really good so we're just going to crisp that up that won't take long and if I can excuse me cameraman thank you <laughs> I just going to get the uh, a spoon. Right, so the carrots now have been soaking and pickling. So they're going to go, they create their own dressing. So you don't need to make a separate dressing. You've got the vinegar from that, some shallots, some spring onions in there, some coriander, a little bit more lime zest goes in there as well. Let's move them out of the way. Okay, thank you. And then what we do is we take this fish out when it's nice and crispy. So with a tempura batter, you're not looking for it to be golden like a, you know, like a fish and chip shop batter. You're looking for it to be nice and crispy. Um, because there's no sugar in there or anything, or honey or anything like that, it would make it go uh, crispy or beer or for, you know, like a beer batter. It's just going to be nice and white like that. And as soon as it comes out of the fryer, we just a little bit of sea salt over the top like that. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll take one of these plates mix up this salad we've got a little bit of like extra virgin rapeseed oil there and this is one of the dishes that you'll find at my fish kitchen in Port Isaac it's very very popular this salad it seems very simple but the coriander and the spring onions the lime and everything works so well together and that pickle and then crispy pollock on top like that Making fish that you might think boring, unboiling. These are my favourite bits when I was a kid. You'd always ask for the scratchings in the in the in the uh, fish and chip shop. Bag of scratchings. Never used to charge us for that. So that's the first dish: crispy pollock with uh, carrot, sweet vinegar dressing. And How nice does that look, ladies and gents? <laughs> and then what I'll do is now is just build this burger. So we've got some of this wasabi mayonnaise we'll put on the bottom. A little bit of this uh, charred lettuce. A 
And we've got some of these pickled onions that I've pickled before. These onions have been done exactly the same way as them carrots, okay? Very easy to do. Fish burger. Have a little bit of onion on there. Touch more of mayonnaise. Oh, who's feeling hungry, everybody? Ooh. Now, if you can get this in your mouth, I'll be very impressed. <laughs> Oi. Oh, who said I <laughs> Sounds like a challenge. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. And there you go. So this is my uh, seafood burger. Let's get a little plate over there. Thank you. Move them out of the way. Now, George, come on up. Now, and that is a burger and a half. So that's my seafood burger, wasabi mayonnaise and char grilled lettuce. How about that, ladies and gents? Lovely. Thank <laughs> you.